women cheat more than men though and a woman is sleeping around with maybe guys that are in and out of prison or like treating her badly hitting and stuff when she just meets a guy who's still a bit shit but he's better than that she thinks he's husband material i don't actually hate andrew tate i used to hate his followers a lot the reality is you've taught her that she can disrespect you in front of your face as long as she powders it as a pleasure and you are dumb enough to think that that woman who's going to enjoy this sexual pleasure in front of you disrespect your boundaries in front of you is not going to do it behind your back you're stupid. Do you think if you're in a relationship, you can let your girlfriend or boyfriend come to Dubai? Absolutely not. I wouldn't even let them go to the toilets without me here. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to The Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today, I've got Sadia Psychology. Hi. You've probably all seen her all over TikTok giving her little bits about men and women. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming. You know, know. We've tried about four times. So I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, we, so, got so, so we got there in the end. That's my fault. So, Sadia, I've seen you on TikTok. Yes. You're, you're Are you sick of me yet, by the no, way? Never, I feel like society is going to end up cancelling me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to care to be cancelled. I don't yeah. think you care. No, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone, like you have a different opinion on every situation, basically. Yeah, I do, apparently. So, apparently, yeah, yeah, apparently. So are you like anti... I forget about all of that. Yeah. Tell me a bit about yourself. Throw it back to you. I'll like, tell you why what it's unique. You uh, yeah, I tell you why people tell me. I don't know what, uh, what if it's true or not, but people do tell me your perspective is sem uh, somewhat unique. And I'll tell you why it's unique because I have the psychology background, but I am a modern woman. I understand modern dating. I understand modern society. I understand modern women. I understand modern men. But combine that with academic experience. Now, most psychologists who give advice online are like 50, 60 years old and they're kind of a little bit out of touch with what's going on the only thing I have in my favor is the fact that I'm in touch with what's going on I have the academic experience and I think because I'm Muslim as well I think that gives a little bit of a unique spin on it and because of that all of that combination which I thought would really fall flat on social media because I thought that Muslim element would not reach or would not uh, kind of resonate with this uh, with the audience but I think it, uh, it it does because it hits into our core human values anyway so I think that's what created that unique perspective so what do you think of the modern day society? society in 2023 um it's very toxic i think it's all shit yeah it's I nonsense think all women cheat and all men cheat women cheat more than men though and this is the difference that happens in modern society men are so delusional about women they start to think no no she would never no 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 that's not right that's they're so delusional about women the other day i spoke to a friend of mine he was speaking to me regarding a girl and i said bro have you ever cheated and he goes yeah <laughs> i said i know because he said to me i don't think I don't think she can cheat. I talk to her all the time on the phone, blah, 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 blah. I said, have you cheated? Mm -hmm. You found a way to do it, yeah? You have, yeah? <laughs> She's yeah. better. She's way better. Any man that thinks a woman don't cheat She's is way stupid. And they'll use the tiniest kind of inklings that she might be faithful. Like, oh, no, no, no she FaceTime you before bed. There's girls out there FaceTiming and then running out. There's yeah. girls out there that are texting you whilst, good night, whilst in somebody else's room. 100%. And so if you know that about women, does that affect your, tra your relationships? Me, I don't trust no one. So how do you get, how do you be with someone? I guess you just gotta accept. No, me different. I don't think I've ever been cheated on personally <laughs> because I think women know that if they're getting involved with me, there's consequences <laughs> if you cheat on me. But do they think that you're gonna cheat? I believe every single woman who gets involved with me, yeah. deep down inside does know that I'm not gonna be 100% faithful. But then that woman deep down in knows to Is keep her options open. 100%, I agree. Yeah. But women in our day and age, don't get with men because of love anymore. Yeah, I know. They used to, mm. like back when my mom and dad, like them many years ago, but nowadays there's money involved, mm. there's status involved, it's how many followers have you got on Instagram. Yeah. It's all to do with social but media. Is that everybody or is that just a unique subset of society? Is that just a good looking or is that, the, I don't know if that's everybody or is that I just a good looking? I think there is still a small minority of women and males who are good. Yeah. But I think everyone can be easily influenced. I think the good just don't find each other or even want each other. I think all the good ones, they always say, oh, I can't find anyone, but they're not looking at other good ones, good men and women. So question then, since mm. you threw that on me, your, uh, what's the word? Psychologist, so, yeah. you know all of this area, you're trained in it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So what's your love life like? <laughs> This is what everyone kind of always wants to know, but I would because honestly... you must have a perfect relationship then. Why would, they, why would you assume because that? Because you're trained in it. So you, it's like a doctor. Doctors must not get ill because they can self-take like, medicine. Have right? you ever met a doctor that's never got ill? 
Well, I haven't met a doctor yet. Have you ever met a surgeon that's really? never had? <laughs> have you ever come across a, a, a PT that hasn't had a cheat day? No, but they can self they can. deal with the situation. Here's so the your th relationship must be better than most. No, not well, at all. Do you want a relationship? Like I am in one, oh, but I, yeah, but I, I wouldn't say it's better than most. I would just say I fight like everybody else. I lose my temper like everybody else. I'm anxious and jealous like every other woman. It's just that the only difference is I might understand where it's coming from. And I understand it's not coming from him. I understand that maybe it's my own kind of issues and my own kind of traumas and stuff like that. But the experience is exactly the same. And I think one of the reasons why my content resonates is because I am batshit crazy myself in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so because I am that I girl. I think you've got to be a bit crazy, especially in 2023. You Bitch. have to be crazy. <laughs> you have to be crazy to survive. So the thing is, like, even my partner will sometimes look at my videos and be like, oh, this girl seems lovely. I've never, I'd love I'm to meet her. <laughs> I'd love to get to know her because um, of course I am like anybody else and I wouldn't be having this insight and this understanding if I didn't experience it so much myself so I experience all of these emotions I know exactly what it's like when you're just checking on your partner for no have reason have you had the toxic relationships and the shit and all of that in your life yeah definitely definitely but it's, I've been the one that's a bit of a nightmare <laughs> so you yeah, just, it's you me just accept it. it's I, I'm me. toxic I'm what <laughs> it is what it is because the thing is I know too much Here's the thing, the average girl, you can tell her a few things and she'll understand and she might believe you. Somebody like me is like, well, sorry, no, your childhood doesn't suggest that you're gonna be act this way. So tell me the truth, who were you with last night? Because so I'll literally- you, What do you do to like, obviously a psychology and all that, how do you understand someone? Is there questions uh, you ask them, is yeah. there? It's so simple. Go on, hit You me. ask about their childhood. Ask me. How was your, are your mom and dad together? No. When did they part? When I was like one. Did you keep in touch with both? Yeah. And are you close to both families? Yeah. And now, as a result, did your parents remarry? Well, separately? Yeah. Yeah. And They're both not with their partners anymore. Okay, they're both now single as yeah. well. Do you have siblings from... Yeah. Okay. Uh, how often would you see your dad? Every day. Oh, really? Yeah. So you pretty much... Okay, so did you go down the route of becoming super independent or super clingy with girls? A bit of both. What it depends what the girl's like. Uh, sometimes <laughs> I get like I just get whipped on it. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just like stay away from it. Do you sometimes get whipped and then start pulling away? Or how do you normally behave? I pull away when it gets too serious. That's it. Okay. So then you you went down the avoidant route. Yeah. What that means is you well, don't, you don't. love you want to be in love. You love women. You love women. You want to be with somebody for sure. Yeah. But uh, you're very emotionally guarded in the process because you've lost trust. Do you know what it is? I don't like showing my vulnerable side because yeah. nowadays women don't accept that. They take advantage of it. But even if it wasn't for nowadays, you your trauma would have done that to you. When you see parents separate, you realize love isn't forever. I didn't see it though. I was only like one. What's going on guys? If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you scroll down. We're now live on Spotify so you can watch us while you're driving, listen to us, listen to us while you're in the gym. Pretty much just listen to us anywhere. And make sure you give us a five star review on Spotify. Thank you. You still experienced it. Yeah, but I've never, do you know what, I'll be honest with you, my mum and dad have always been best friends mm, after nice. the breakup, so I've never actually experienced that big argument with the family, the breakup, the I hate her, did it, like, I've never really been involved in that shit, mm -hmm. so for me, I'm quite happy with my upbringing, yeah. don't get it twisted, I didn't have the best upbringing, mm -hmm. but what was hard about it? Everything, like life in general. Okay. Like, Did you grow up in North London? Yeah. How yeah. do you know? Because you're Turkish and Greek. Yeah. <laughs> you only go to one area <laughs> in London. One area. <laughs> yeah. So, what does that mean about me? What does it say about me as what a person? What it suggests is that you're going to always be, you're always going to love women. You're always going to want to be with women, but oh, you're not going to be emotional. never change. No yeah. But you won't necessarily be the most emotionally available partner. So, what that would look like is you'll love them, you want to be around them, but you seek separation in your own time as well. And what you might do if the girl gets too clingy is create separation and distance by maybe talking to other women, by taking a holiday, by living in a separate room or whatever no, it is. I don't do that. I'm very faithful. Oh, okay. I don't. I, I'm <laughs> Serious, I'm, I'm clean, faithful. Describe faithful. Life. I believe cheating can even be down to having the fault of wanting to be. With and you've else. never cheated. What had the fault? I've had that loads of faults, <laughs> but I mean, in the sense as if my girl, if I'm in a relationship and I'm actually with her, loyal and everything, and she. So people ask me, what do you define as cheating? Mm -hmm. Like my boys, when we've had chats, like I had these kind of chats with all my boys all the time. Yeah. And I think cheating is, it can be even down to looking at a boy's Instagram picture and having the intention to, oh, if me and Mikey break up, I'm gonna message this guy. Right. That is cheating in my eyes. Right. Do you agree so or how disagree? Do you, how do you monitor that? I don't, I just believe everyone's a cheat. 
And then how do you navigate relationships as a result of That's that? That's my issue. I don't because the second I get 1% of that, even if I see her like a guy's picture or follow a guy, I automatically see, okay, leave her. Halas. Well, then th- what that means is you enter relationships uh, almost like a, in a race of who can leave who first. I always leave first. Well, so I'm always winning. So it's not winning because you always end up back on the market. Yeah, but then I'm, in my eyes, I'm going to find the right girl who's no, it not. It doesn't gonna work like that. It's not the right girl. It's the right mentality. Yeah, but I think I need to find a girl with the right mentality. And when I find her, then all my issues will it just. It has to be you, because here's the thing: when you have the right mentality, your vetting process is so much better. You select women better. But when you have a mentality, everyone's going to cheat. You're going to see that girl who's got those cheating red flags and give her a chance, because you're like, everyone cheats anyway. So it doesn't matter if she's posting a lot on Instagram. It doesn't matter if she's doing that, because everyone cheats anyway. But when she does, I'm going to leave her. But Absolutely. if you start having this same mentality, where I I'm only going to be with a good woman who doesn't cheat on me the moment you see a red flag you don't entertain it but when you have a mentality everyone cheats everyone cheats you you end up selecting cheaters do you know what it is, it is though even being on instagram yeah when i'm nightmare. scrolling through it it's full of temptation mm. like no matter what you can even try and unfollow everyone you go on the for you page and it's just full of them like you so can't th- so then how do you navigate do you end up messaging girls how do you go through do i message girls yeah of course and do they reply because you've got like I've a hundred percent uh hundred percent reply ratio have you yeah. So then how do you remain faithful? I or do you just not them. get it? Okay. I just don't message <laughs> them when true. I'm with someone. I just avoid it at all costs. So how are we going to fix this problem? It's like, no problem. I'm, I'm sweet as. You don't mind? Do you want to get married? Yeah, one day. This do year, hopefully. Inshallah, Inshallah. With kids and everything? Of course. Yeah, but you're not going to pick right. I have to pick for you. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to pick do you right. Go I, I promise one. you, I can guarantee you the girls that you entertain are nonsense. Some are. I openly know it, but I'm entertaining them for different reasons but like some women i don't want a relationship with i just want to take out and get to know or mm. go out with them but other women i do have the intention to okay you may be potential wifey but that takes a while for me to work out but here's the thing when you start dropping your standards and having this two kind of uh, options one that is wifey one that is just short term you blur the lines when a woman is sleeping around with maybe guys that are in and out of prison or like treating her badly hitting and stuff when she just meets a guy who's still a bit shit but he's better than that she thinks he's husband material yeah so it lowers your standards but i think that comes down back down to childhood again with women if they like that certain type of man that goes back to your childhood and what mm. you've experienced in life and what you think is right. Because mm-hmm. some women believe that that is normal. That's how it should be because that's what they've witnessed between mums and dads. Yeah. And it's wrong. It's disgusting. I don't agree with yeah, it. Yeah, but they but think it's normal. That, so based on is. your child, what is your type in women? My type? Yeah. Maybe not looks wise, but how, in terms of like how you feel about them. What is the type? Independent. independent. has to be independent because I don't want her to... Be I clingy with her, you. Yeah. yeah. Independent. Must be a jealous girl. She independent but jealous. jealous. She has to be jealous. Because <laughs> if she didn't needy, uh, she has to constantly bash my phone off, otherwise I'll look elsewhere. Yeah. Um so But I think it like comes down to I want shit. a girl who I can't get. Right. I tell girls, just say no to me. Mm. Just say no for as long as you can and I'll be here for long. Do you know why we- men like women that they can't get? No, no, women like men they can't get as well. It's more Both. men. It's more men that like that. Because it's we're dogs we want, you, you we like the out. chase but also it comes when you've had a childhood where you didn't receive the love in the way that you wanted it you had to earn it a little bit so when you have to work for love you think when a woman doesn't want you that much and she treats you badly working for her makes you want her more but that woman doesn't want you back and she won't be consistent when a girl ignores me I want her more but here's the thing women don't ignore men they like so they if don't. she's ignoring you it's a signal no, she's not that into you Trust me, we don't ignore the men we are crazy but about. you say that, but it depends because when you're pissed off with him, you want him to know you're pissed off. Oh yeah, maybe when you're pissed off and you're ready to establish a relationship. I don't get ignored for the fun of it. <laughs> no, but those guys where they're like, oh, she's kind of still into her ex or oh, she's still no, not, no, she's not giving, done. and they're still get, get, get trying to work on her. She don't want you. And if she does want you, you're a last resort. If that happens, if you have to Mainly work if towards you it. In any of them kind of situations, yeah, just run. just lock it off, yeah. So do you believe that you can a man be can be friends with an ex? I think even if you can, let's say it's all gone and so on and so forth, unless you're co-parents, there's no need to. But, so I was in a relationship yeah. where my ex was friends, good friends with her ex-partner. Mm-hmm. And she said it was because she felt sorry for him and she wanted to just be there for him. Right. And I said, so that means you still care about him, right? She was like, yeah, of course I care about him. I was like, well, I don't want to be with you. Yeah. Why would I want to be with someone who cares for an ex-partner that they... 
have slept with, yeah. they've loved. I don't want it. And then how did she respond to that? She blocked it. And then? We kept it moving. But uh, here's what I would say. It's more about, y- y- yes, she can listen to you. But when with women, you have to look at their pre-existing morals. If you tell a girl to do something and then she listens, fair enough, yeah? But it's better to choose one who's self-regulated. And with men. I agree with that as well. Yeah, it's better to just choose self-regulated. I know men who are like, oh, the girl I'm going to marry, she deleted her OnlyFans. It's like, well... She had OnlyFans. She had OnlyFans. And, um, or they'll say something like that along those lines. It's better to just choose one self-regulated. Don't feel like you can change her. See who she is before you because it's her dad's job to raise her. If he did a good job, you're chilling. If he did a terrible job, you're screwed. And if... If before she met you, she's moving a bit mad, but you think you can fix her, her upbringing will always catch up on her and on you. So just let it be. Be with somebody who's, whose dad do- has done a good job, not you. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help. So what do you think about all this red pill movement? It's just nonsense in my head. What's your opinion on it? Because obviously, loads of your videos of Andrew Tate have gone viral. Uh. And you claim to not like what Andrew Tate was about, but... I watched an episode where you were sat in this exact room. Oh, yeah, it was right here. And I was so super excited. (laughs) And I'm like, hi. And your exact (laughs) words, I'm going to put the clip here. Your exact words was... Oh my god, I'm so I'm overly excited. I'm overly excited. I would say that to him. Even when I when I speak to him now, but I'll when, say that. So let's I'm have really your opinions on this man. <laughs> How Andrew Lovelock. Hey, hey, hey. Nice to meet you. Hi. Sorry, I got over excited, didn't I? I you, you caught me all excited. How so are you? I, we watched back your previous like content. Yeah. We think, oh, this guy must hate him. Well, here's the thing. I don't actually hate Andrew Tate. I used to hate his followers a lot. Andrew Tate, I didn't mind so much at, at first. At first, I didn't like some of the things. And then I realized he actually makes a lot of sense if you give it more time and energy and to actually listen to it. And then I hated, hated, hated his followers. And I still do hate his followers. But that's his followers. That's not him. He's not done that. He's but here's the thing. Your followers are a representation of your message. They really are. But maybe they and hate. Maybe they give you the grief you get because of how you acted in the first place. Because you was anti-Tate. You know, no, but I, I was anti-feminism. I was anti-red pill. I was anti both of them because they're both not constructive to relationships. I hate feminism I and I hate. Says. You agree with everything? everything? I don't agree with everything. I agree with word for word what he says in long form. Format. Okay. When it's just cut up and stuff. So, what that's are some of his controversial views that you agree with and girls kind of get everything. annoyed? Can you give me an example of things that girls get annoyed with that you agree with that Andrew says? <laughs> Oh, I, I, I actually asked him this question the other day. I can't remember what it was. I mes- I messaged him something. He's like, you're wrong. And I was like, I'm right. And it was about how men with money get girls, right? Yeah, correct. And I was saying in the interview, I was saying only um, men that get girls based on money, they attract cheating women and disloyal women. Because loyal because having money means, A, you've got lots of options, and B, you don't have much time. Loyal women are super, super yeah. emotionally invested. They need you home at a certain time. They need predictability. They need stability. So that loyal woman will want a guy that's home at five o'clock, dinner together, bed together. But I think every woman, no matter who it is, no matter their mm-hmm. whether they're cheating, whether they're a good girl, whether they're not, wants a man with status, a man with power, a man who they look at but and say, that's thing, my every man. Every girl wants that, but they look at the sacrifice it takes. Good women realize the sacrifice is too expensive. If I want a really famous, good, amazing, popular guy... Uh, it's going to involve him being on the road a lot or him not coming home at time. He's not, not being there for the kid's birthday. A good woman recognizes the sacrifice is too expensive. The clout chasing, disloyal, gold digging cheater thinks, I can make that sacrifice. I don't care if you don't come home. I don't care if you don't see the kids. I don't care. I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah, but That's sometimes it's too late. Sometimes you've fallen in love with that man, not realizing what sacrifice you've got to take. Here's the thing. We fall in love with the future man. 
So we know when we're dealing with a really successful man, he's not going to be available here, there and everywhere. We know when we're dealing with the guy that's got nine to five, he's going to be home here and there. We think about the future. So if she falls in love with you, they can both cheat. But the stable woman likes a stable lifestyle. So what happens is that that loyal woman, even if you're cheating or not cheating, but if you know you're coming home at 5 p.m., we're having dinner, you're going to my mom's house on the weekends, that's the lifestyle she likes because she's loyal disloyal women or you're going to be away for a month no worries she's got a side guy yeah so here's the thing i always say rich men actually are more likely to get disloyal women he think he he said i was wrong but he was like no that's not true you're (laughs) full of shit but he would say that rich men in general just get the best pick of women i I was like they get the worst pick of women rich men are far more likely to be cheated on i think the more successful and more clout based you are and stuff like that the harder it gets to find a genuine woman because Absolutely. you don't know what she's with you for is she yeah. with me for my money is she with me because of who I am is she uh, with me because and also rich men get dumber they are so so stupid when it comes to choosing women <laughs> because they don't have the time to do the vetting process properly they don't have the same time you to realise a school that says for like, rich dumb men <laughs> I should thing here I would be very I would be very good at that I'm very good at wet. I can predict the problems for you but I don't think anyone can predict the problem because it's the problems in a relationship are based off of both actions. No, it's not. So, you, but you we're mi- consistent and we have patterns. Everybody does. I can tell you yours. You can't. I on, just, I'm the most un predictable. Uh, yeah. This is what you are. No, oh. I swear to you. I'm okay, so I'll tell you. Go I'll on, tell you. Me. Yeah. You meet a girl. You're probably like, oh, I really like her. This, that, and the other. So Throw yourself in at first. Yeah. You make her think, okay, this guy's gonna be. And as soon as you start getting too close, you become withdrawn. So you might crave her less physically as well as emotionally. You might then start sending, not actually cheating, but sending messages, keeping distant, and she'll complain that you're becoming distant. So how do I change that? So am I right? Hey, no, I don't come think you on. are. I think you're right because I switch <laughs> I, up depending I, on each woman. No, I do, you, I honestly. I would imagine that's your pattern with No, I swear to you because some girls, I'll go in there with the intention of, okay, cool, let me make this girl fall for me. Other girls, it's how quickly can I take this girl out? Right. It completely dep- I don't sell but, dreams. But here's the thing. I would imagine them consistently saying he started off more invested and then became withdrawn. No, do you know what it is? And girls, he's super independent and he does his own thing a lot of the time. Girls listen to what they want to hear. Mm. So I could tell them 101 different things, but from them things they picked out, he said he loves me. Yeah. No, I told you I hate you three times. Yeah. I told you I don't want to be with you, but I said, oh, I really care But then for you. doesn't that show you you're inconsistent? No, because I don't lie to women. If I'm with you for one reason, mm. I'll be 100% genuine. I say, look, this is what I want. Mm-hmm. If you're still down, we're down. If not, see you later. But it's not about whether you lie to women or not lie to women. It's the, uh, the idea that it starts intense and then withdrawn. Whether it's for a short-term fling or a long-term. 100%, but I think that comes with, you need to... That comes with trust issues. But I do that because I want to show them what they can have first. That's what people with short-term mating strategies do. What they do is show them all they got. (laughs) Am I just never going to find anyone? A little bit. Genuinely. So what is my ideal match? Somebody who gives you space, but reassurance at okay. the same time so she allows you to go do your own thing but she reminds you she's still in love with you and she's still going to be there and she's still going to come back so whereas the super clingy one won't give you the space and the super independent one won't give you the reassurance so you need somebody who's in between space yeah, that's right. that is what yeah. i need yeah. yeah so and how you get that is you look at her childhood if she's got secure family environment what happens is she recognizes that people can go away but they'll come back she trusts them but if she's got a bit of chaos she thinks if people go away she's gonna be a, yeah so I need to find a girl who's got a good childhood. Inshallah. And how do I find that out? Just ask her. How was yeah, your childhood? Just ask him. Just ask him. So you think that makes a massive difference? Yeah. Huge difference. If people ask that and realise the impact, they would save themselves a lot of trauma. And you don't think people can change? You don't uh, think you can heal them? I think you don't need to change. You need to accept. I think why should we change people? Why don't we just accept them for who they are and go around their boundaries rather than being like, okay, you're a bit too like this. Become this. Just accept. Find people who can accept you who you are. So from now on, girls, if I'm talking to you, if I'm not just asking about... Just know he's going to be annoying, yeah? <laughs> I'm just going to be like, just, that's what I've you just need. got to my friend Tadia. Hold on. Uh, uh, Tadia, exactly. just a quick one. This girl's saying this. What's that mean? Exactly. That's all it is. I Quite think it's it's a lot easier said than done. Mm-hmm. Because some men fall in love with looks. All and men. if you asked me five years ago, Mikey, what would you want? Looks or personality? It was yeah. always looks. Yeah. Now I genuinely don't give a shit about looks. What does Not don't say, give a shit mean? No, of course I need to have the sexual attraction because mm-hmm. that's the most important. Yeah. But my the girls I used to go for and the girls I go for now look completely different. What do they used to look like? An Instagram model, mm. 
a girl who just looks good on my arm. Mm -hmm. Now I look for someone who will look after me as I get older. Oh. Doesn't mean she looks bad. Yeah. She might look beautiful and one looks sexy, mm -hmm. but I know she's... And how are you going to get a girl like that? What are you going to offer her? What am I other than offer? other Fucking than world. what Look is that? Like, Come on, <laughs> what, no, would, what I, do you I offer? Because here's the thing: you can offer a girl a lot, but without emotional investment and emotional availability, you'll only attract broken women. But I think a lot of women are broken now. Yeah, and even men. A lot of men are fucked as well. But Super. I think so. Society and social media. Mm -hmm. Everybody believes the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. No matter what it is, every single person mm -hmm. believes grass is greener on the other side. And, and this, this what are you going to do about that? How are you going to fix that? I just, I've got you. <laughs> you're going to help me. Well, you're my cure. Is, I just don't know how men are going to fix that. Either you have to accept you're going to be in an open relationship. Never. Never, oh. ever, ever. Oh. Ever. I'm but here's what I don't understand about no men who like um, who like promiscuous women. What do you think? This is one thing that really bothers me about men in this modern day. They love promiscuous women but want her to be sexually loyal to them. So they'll encourage her to do threesomes. They'll encourage her to... You know you, yeah. What I swear I to God, I'm going to call your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say nothing. I just smiled. I'm not that man. I hope but not. On. But they encourage this nonsense. They encourage her to be sexually promiscuous. They encourage her for threesomes. They encourage her to watch porn. They encourage her to dress a certain way. And then expect her to be sexually exclusive to him. You open the door. But the for second opening they do the that, in that man's head, that relationship's over. But he d doesn't change the fact that she, she, she also thinks the relationship's over. Here's the thing. Here's a delusion of men. They think they're in control of these kind of threesome environments. They think, yeah, yeah, I'm getting a great deal. What they're not realizing is you've just taught that girl, I can sleep with somebody else. You actually don't mind that much. I'm doing it in front of you right now, but watch what I'm doing behind your back. You've taught her the door is open. That's what men are teaching her. And they have no clue. They think they're just a king enjoying this moment. The reality is you've taught her that she can disrespect you in front of your face as long as she powders it as a pleasure. And you are dumb enough to think that that woman who's going to enjoy this sexual pleasure in front of you, disrespect your boundaries in front of you, is not going to do it behind your back. You're stupid. Yeah, so all you men out there having threesome. All you men, just shit. know that yeah. you are just and you're just watching this moment. There's plenty of moments happening behind your back. So you do believe the second a relationship goes to that level, Absolutely it's done. Absolutely done. What you've shown that woman is that there's no boundaries for towards sex. He actually doesn't mind you being promiscuous. He accepts it. There's a part of him who's a bit of a cockold. He enjoys watching you have sexual pleasure with somebody else. When you've opened that boundary for a woman, she can never look at you the same way. She'll never look at you as that strict husband man. She yeah. will look at you as the he fucking idiot. Yeah, so it, unconsciously. In the moment, she'll be like, no, no, babe, this is for you. This is for you. The moment you're not there, she's in somebody else's threesome. You, you know open that a, door for her. A lot her. of girls don't realise it themselves. And men as well. They, they don't, don't realise like, it themselves. What saying is a man don't uh, know that. A and, man and a woman doesn't eyes, know that. She's like, no, no, I did it just for him. Yeah, I don't think, but her brain now changes. It's changing. And she goes, okay, cool, I can go and do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, nah, so basically, I ain't So never respect yourselves. You're so stupid if you think that's uh, your pleasure. It's not your pleasure. It is. I mean, for a minute, but watch what happens. But she's somebody, she is now. I don't know about a minute, but. But here's the thing. When you in encourage that three play in your relationship, just know she is now a participant in three plays. She'll be in somebody else's. And she'll be like, don't tell my boyfriend. Just like that girl that's in your three play who's like, don't tell my boyfriend. I'm not what do you mean? I, I, I would that. imagine. You know, we'll ask, we'll Google it to see how men respond. But <laughs> generally, this is how they feel. So, men, you are so stupid. It hurts my soul when I speak to men like this. Because they're like, oh, my wife cheated on me. I'm like, what are the red flags? Well, we used to do a lot of this beforehand. We used to do this. We used to do that. So, I'm how like, do you okay. stop a girl cheating? And how do you stop a man cheating? You pick wisely. It's really that. But you can't stop them. Here's the thing. No one could make me cheat in a million years. It's just not me. Even if I'm with the wrong person. I, I genuinely do believe every every woman cheats. Maybe I haven't met my Maybe not temptation the, yet. They may not cheat. They may not che they may not cheat because maybe they may not be given that opportunity. But Yeah, maybe I, I, I should say I should make a caveat to that. Maybe I haven't ever been in that circumstance. But the reality is it's not my nature. Because pre my partner, I was not like this post my partner I'm not like this because it's just who I am as a person now if you think I can take this woman she's cheated on previous men she's got that in her but with me she'll be different if I treat her well she'll be different yeah. you can't do that to people it doesn't work like that you just have to pick sele uh, select wisely men select so wisely and think their behavior is going to make her not cheat it doesn't work like that I've learned as well if you take a woman off a man yeah she can be taken off you 
day in a I've heartbeat. Not, I've not learned that from previous experience, by the way, because no one's taking no one off you. But, but in general, same with men, same with anyone. I you think pick the wisely. the second you, that girl is open to leaving a partner mm. and going for someone else. Well, the second she's open to talking to another man while she's with someone. Yeah, I just, it's not I, even I'm, that. I'm it's the very, second very, she's very open to that. with my rules in relationships. And people call me crazy or people say that I'm controlling. I'm not. I just know what. How do you? How are you strict? What kind of things do you do that prevents? So that? I've got no issues with what girls wear. I don't yeah. care about stuff like that. I don't care where she goes. Okay. But if I don't want you to go somewhere, you're not going. Not uh-huh. because I'm a controlling crazy boyfriend, but I it's know something that you don't know. So and maybe what, I don't want to tell you. So what kind of things do you accept and not accept? Well, ask me things. I'll tell you what I would accept. Would you and mind? Would you mind if she goes out a lot, like clubs, but she tells you what time she's going and what time yeah, she's coming? Yeah, I'd mind. Out? You'd mind. Yeah. Would you Why mind? Why is my girl in a club? <laughs> Jamie, what are you going to for? Would you mind if she uh, takes a lot of bikini pictures on Instagram and yep. stuff? You'd mind. It's my body. Uh, would you? <laughs> would you mind if she has guy friends? You should. What the, you know what? That actually pisses me off. What does she need a guy friend for? Banter. But what banter? What you want to sleep with her? <laughs> no, it's banter. Okay, banter. Uh, yeah. So that banter. <laughs> yeah. Text him. Yeah. Text him. Say I'm coming around to sleep with you. Yeah. What's he gonna say? Yeah, come no. He's good. Yeah. So that's not a guy friend. That's a man who's waiting for our relationship to fall mm. so that he can get in there. Okay, but even let's say that's never gonna happen. That text is never gonna happen on both ends. But you don't know that. But you it don't could know be that. one drink. But here's the thing, it in mod here's a problem which men again don't realise. You're in a modern world. So Most you of don't these mind young your wi- partner having female friends. This video is sponsored by Everything Education. Everything Education is English, Maths and Science classes. So if you need them in person or virtual online, they can do both. So whatever suits your preference, message them and I'm sure they'll find a solution that works around you. Uh, my partner doesn't have female friends Why? out of his own accord. Yeah, out of but his you, own accord. But would you mind if he did? It depends what she looks like. <laughs> <laughs> if she's no, clapped, I, he I, can be best friends. <laughs> Jamie, I, whatever, it's not about looks to me because I've seen some 10 10s go with two out of 10s. But here's the thing, what, I, what you men aren't realising, women are bisexual now. Modern women, young girls, they're bisexual. So she yeah. goes out with a bunch of girls. She might be kissing a girl on the club. So what are you guys going to do? Sweet. She could do that if she wants. But, but no. that's the mentality. No, no, honestly, that's though. The, here's the thing what men don't realise. You guys don't realise that nowadays, because of pornography, the girls you guys are going for, like the, I would say the average 18 to 25-year-old is bisexual now because of pornography, because yeah, of the agreed. use of po- po- pornography. But a woman don't so, know that until it's brought out of her by a man yeah. usually um so then what happens is you're you're policing her male friendships having no monitoring of her female friendships not realizing those female friendships are more of a risk because it attracts more men i get it i do get where you're coming from if, but I, if, if you see a bunch of girls that are all like promiscuous with each other going on a night out or going for dinner together they're gonna have they're more of a risk than her talking to the guy that she met in high school and she's been friends with and had gone to his wedding yeah but you can monitor i think as a man we know the way women act well we believe we do yeah, yeah. we seem to think we know how a woman acts how she moves how this so usually you just check their friends straight away but here's the thing, a woman is more at risk when she goes out with a bunch of pretty girls than she does with a male friend of hers who she's known forever. I promise you, those girls are far more at risk. When I have female friends in Dubai that will say, oh, I wanna go, I wanna meet guys tonight, so girls, do you wanna come out? If I take my guy friends, it's gonna cock block. You're more at risk. And guys Agreed, are so stupid. No, they no, think, no, right oh, if you're sense. with a bunch of girls, it's fine. In a place like Dubai, if I go out but with Dubai a bunch of... Dubai, you're finished. If, if I go out with a bunch of girls with, uh, in Dubai, it's game... Like, it's non-stop. Somebody will pay our bill. Somebody will come and talk to us. Somebody. I if I go with a male friend, female friend, whatever, no mixed group, over. no one talks to us. A man is so stupid thinking male friends are the risk. Your real risk is when she goes out with the girls. That's your real risk. So, guys, pattern up. But how are you getting... This, is a, red fi- this is a red pill advice that I hate you're far more at risk when she's with a bunch so of what, girls so my girl's not allowed no friends no females no, no she males. Can have friends but you, that's what you're saying you're you pick, saying is you pick wisely yeah, but how can I tell her to pick here's the thing girls that actually have male friends chances are they're less excitable by men they realize what men are like if I'm friends with you yeah in two weeks of watching you in Dubai won't I be scarred <laughs> I'll be ter- out of PTSD I've been on my, best, would... been on my best behavior I'd yeah? be like guys are moving mad this that and the other it would naturally create a, a detraction yeah but if I've never spoken to you never know nothing about you just like the mystery I'm more likely to be influenced by you and I'm more likely to be interested so the friendship actually gets rid of the attraction a lot of the time but then how can you monitor because you can monitor your girlfriend, you can make sure she's had a good childhood. Mm. And then how can I monitor her friends? Uh, well, she picks correctly. Here's the thing. So I've got to make sure she's correct, she picks correct, 
and her friends also pick correct Here's because the thing. it's the outer I, circle. I would say, for example, with my, my partner, his friends, they, it makes me feel secure knowing who his friends are. Now, if you had a bunch of friends who are out and about, this, that, the strip clubs, this, that, and the other, I would feel in, more insecure. Now, I'm not going to say to you, you can't stop talking to this girl, that girl, blah, blah, blah. But when I'm picking, I'm looking at that. At your natural selection. I'm not thinking you can't go there, you can't do it. Like the red pill would be like, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. How about you can't pick correctly? No, I just have strict rules, that's it. Pick correctly, you won't need a rule ever no, again I in your life. I, I still need... I promise you. But there's no girl that is going to be 100% ticks every single one of my Of course, boxes. but here's the thing, here's the difference. She doesn't break your deal breakers. You can pick, she's going to have things to worry about. I have a million deal, like issues that I, um, a partner has to kind of scold and scaffold. But I don't have deal breakers for him. Uh, yeah, I might, maybe for somebody else, but not so for him. I have so a few deal, deal breakers. breakers. I do. What's I'm, your deal breaker? No drugs. Right? I don't care what, never. Do not do not touch it. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Um, don't disrespect me publicly. Mm -hmm. The way I see it is a female, any relationship, you're a mirror reflection. Yeah. If you're out and you're, sorry to say it, but being naughty, naughty. No, no one's going to turn around and say, oh, Sadia's being bad. They're going to say, Mikey's girlfriend, Sadia. Yeah, Mikey can't control his girl. Yeah. So it embarrasses me. Yeah. Then they don't, men don't care about a girl being a hoe. Yeah. They don't care about it. They just go, oh yeah, she's fit. Yeah, let her do her thing. She's like, what? Mm -hmm. But then they're gonna laugh at me. Yeah. And I think, look at that idiot. Mm -hmm. His girl's being that. Like, I don't like that. But likewise, if I'm out being a dog, they can turn around and say, look, sorry, yeah. I can't even control that man. He's yeah. such Sardi's a dog. an idiot. Yeah. So, so your I representation. Think it's just it's you're a mirror. So when you learn that and you actually understand that, then you start acting different. But here's what I would say: when you are when you realize that and learn that, you select that. But it's still... Selection is everything. In life, everything is selection. So here's the thing. If I want a mirror kind of person, I'm not going to choose the loudest guy in the club, popping bottles, joy uh, pouring drinks down women's throat because I'm not going to be like, oh, well, let me be with you, but then I'm going to tell you not to do that. I'm a grown woman. That's where you met him as well. And that's, that's what you know. Yeah, him I'm a grown woman who's got time to raise a grown man. You select wisely. Now, what men are doing, especially in this day and age, they're choosing that insta ho and thinking, but when I get with her, she's going to stop doing that, stop doing that, this, that, and the other. No, honey. When you get that, you're going to fund her lifestyle while she keeps posting like that. Do you believe that a man. You live in Dubai. Yes. Yeah? You know, you've seen it firsthand. Nice you know what this mm -hmm. devil's playground is yes. like. <laughs> Do you think if you're in a relationship, yeah. you can let your girlfriend come to the, or boyfriend come to Dubai? As a holiday? Without you. Absolutely not. I wouldn't even let them go to the toilets without me here. No. Yeah. So I had a friend phone me up and his girlfriend was out and I saw her out at a club mm -hmm. and he turned around to me and goes, oh, what do you think she was like? like was she? I said, my brother, the second she got on that plane, you Just lost her. Over for you. you lost her. Yeah. She has spoken to men. Yeah. She has. She's cheated on you on this holiday. 100%. Maybe she ain't slept with no one. Maybe not. Yeah. But she has cheated. You don't cheated. have to sleep with men. That's but you saying. do have to entertain them. She's if you want cheated. a free night and stuff, you have to entertain them. And once, uh, the best way to find out she's cheated is, babe, show me the bill. Yeah. Show me you paid for it. Yeah. And they're too you expensive. Here's the thing. The restaurants are too expensive for girls. Yeah. yeah they're so, so, I mean, I don't know what, what a bill looks like here, but it, they're super, super expensive. So if she's gone to those places, you can't pay it as a woman. There has to be a man involved. 100%. And there has to be a rich man involved. And it is what it is. It doesn't mean she has to do anything with him. But, that is but he cheating. has to be on the table. If my girlfriend lets a man and pay for the bill yeah in my eyes that's cheating that's but then my as job. a man should you cover her bills when she goes to restaurants well, while she's out in a different country no chance why my dick but here's no the way. thing it, it, i completely agree that if a man pays your bill while it's you're cheating. in another country it's kind of cheating but i also think if you're going to have that masculine role you should be like babe where are you going tonight how much is the bill i'll cover it no, no. make it's sure babe, you where don't you going? i'll meet you there Oh, well, say if you're not in the country or whatever, then, then I happen. cover it. But nah. if you're not going to cover it, that girl is going to go to another man to cover she it. Will. It's too expensive. She, it's too, no girl can come to Dubai unless you've got some rich family and cover your own bills out. You it's can't too, cover it. It is too expensive. It's too expensive. And I think... So then wouldn't a man say, like, you can go anywhere, but you're going to take my card and cover it. I want to see where the bills no, are. Because if you're going to set the boundaries, you have to set the uh, alternative then. But then now she knows that... Because she say she's not paying, she's not making a lot of money. My man's not go. letting me go uh, go sit on this table, but he's also not covering me. Then he's got the rules of the masculine man, but he hasn't got the pr provider of the masculine man. Uh, being a masculine man doesn't mean you pay for your. It, it means you provide. It has to you be provide the essentials and what she needs. You provide a lifestyle that means that she doesn't require another man ever again. But then you can't. No man on this planet can sustain that. Most men can. You can't because she's gonna want and want and want. But she stays and want within your want. budget. 
She stays within your... Here's the thing. You take a woman, not that she's going Namos every night, but you take a woman that even if it's just McDonald's, whatever, but she stays within your budget if you're going to put those rules and regulations now. If you've got no rules and regulations, you can do what you want and if there's something, yeah, you can hustle. That's fine. But if you're going to put barriers in, the protection has to come with the provision. It has to be both. It can't be protection, no provision. Because then you're just an, a nuisance to a woman. But if you're a man that says, no, 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 I'll cover the McDonald's, I'll do it, even if it's just a McDonald's budget. But if you're doing both, then you're a man then you can put the protection in. So the way I see it is, I pay for my girl's bill. Yeah. yeah. When I'm out for dinner, if I'm on the table, even if she brings 10 friends, I'm the man, she's my partner, I'm paying the bill. Yeah. But I want her to have independence as well. Mm. If you're going out shopping, I'm not going to pay, pay, yeah. pay for my... I don't you don't think need that's to right do that, Because yeah. if I'm taking you out, mm. you're out with me. If I invite you out, you're with me. I'm paying. Yeah. End of. But I'm not going to... She's not going to phone up, babe, I want a new handbag. I said, buy it then. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> my job, put the phone down. I'm not... Yeah. I think as time goes on, maybe yeah. 10 years into a relationship, married it's and different, kids, it's yeah. different. You it's have different. one card, you I'm, use it. I'm talking more serious relationships, yeah. But I think when it's young people out in Dubai, they yeah. get, if your girl wants to go to Dubai, it's cheating. Yeah, I think so as Even well. if she wants to go. With, without going, you. Even if she wants to go on a girl's holiday to Dubai, yeah. you know that this is the devil's playground. I, I would agree with that. It is the worst place you can't the, here's the thing you're going to want to go on a boat you're going to want to go on the nice restaurants none of those can women pay for it's too expensive it's <laughs> you can't. It's, it's, just, there's men everywhere and there's men everywhere and they've got money on money on money it's not like london where a guy just your, your got lucky compete. with bitcoin yeah your man can't compete out here. Your ma whatever, london, he, whatever he's got a home He's got I temple. have to say, English London men cannot compete at all in Dubai because they're competing with men whose dads are rich. So these London men, they can, you know, they can have a great holiday and stuff, but they they can't I'm do it the way. Then. then you're good. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I always say to girls. It's like if you want money, you have to check what his dad does, not what he does, because these men that made it rich and made it quick rich, um, you know, they do all these talks on Instagram and they're like, oh yeah, make money with me, blah blah. But they're usually risk takers, and risk takers they lose money more than they make money sometimes whereas if your dad's rich worst case scenario you always got father-in-law and stuff like that but when it's just a guy that's hustled and made it that london guy chances are his girlfriend's paying for his rent i went to a club i was on best behavior as well went to the club Which and the club was this uh, uh avenue okay and a group of guys ordered 15 as i think called azul i don't know what it is bottles of vodka so oh, i yeah. don't drink so i don't yeah. know when did you stop drinking by the way uh, Oh, yeah. When I reverted, I stopped. Having amazing. A sip of that Me, that's amazing. So, do you miss it or no? no. Okay. Do you know what it was? Just off the I went to the club. Everyone got smashed. Yeah. I didn't drink. Mm -hmm. I was having Red Bull. Yeah. And I must have had about seven Red Bulls that night. My mate yeah. goes, she like, you're going to give yourself a heart attack. And I was like, shit, actually, maybe I should slow <laughs> oh, down yeah. all the Red Bull. So, I stopped. And then I got home the next day and I woke up at 11 o'clock. Right. And the rest of the people text me at 5 p.m. Yeah. I was like, we just See, I've, I was never, like, I've never drank, so I don't know the difference. But what is it like going from drinking to now, like, not drinking? How has life changed? Do you know what it is? You see everything from a different light. Mm. Whereas I'm stood there and I'm watching everyone drunk. Mm. I feel like I'm watching from a bird's eye view. Mm. Whereas I used to be in that circle, getting drunk, being that person. Now I just, I don't even have the urge. The yeah. other day I got home and Raheem was like, have you drunk? I was like, bro, I will never drink. You don't need to Aww. ask that question. You don't need to check up on me. I really? will. That's the one thing I will never do again. Inshallah, how come? Why is that? You know what I always say? My favorite rule about being a Muslim is the fact that I can't drink alcohol because I see it as a devil's drink. It is. And, um, and it's so, it so skews your perception of everything. So I really hate it. And all the mistakes people make in life usually stem from some alcohol. So I always, I, it's something I'm really grateful about. I worry about people who have to start and then give it up. Is it not difficult for you guys? Not no hangovers, nothing? I have no urge to drink again. That's amazing. Don't get it twisted. The only problem is like, I've got a restaurant back home mm. and I've got like, I've come out to Dubai. Yeah, now. how I, is your restaurant by the way? So well. It's doing yeah, really I've when never you been. Over, like, I need to come. Yeah, because I live in West London. Make sure yeah, I will. 100%. It's, it's, I sit back and I look at everyone and I think you lot are just like, you're spending all this money mm. on a bottle of vodka. Yeah. You're drinking it. You're gonna, it ain't going to help you. Not at all. You're not even going to know what you're doing. Yeah. You're going to go home. You're going to wake up in the morning fucked with a headache. Mm. And then you're going to say, I wish I didn't drink. I can't believe how much men spend on bottles to get girls so, yeah, that just come saying, to get free drinks and leave. Guys from London bought 15 of them bottles, yeah? They're yeah. a £1,000 each. 15 grand. There was a group of Arab boys on the other table. He bought 100 bottles. Yeah, yeah. You can't compete. <laughs> I love the Arab money. I have to say that Arab money. And they don't drink. <laughs> and they don't drink. They don't drink. They won't touch a bottle. Hundred bottles. They won't didn't touch drink it. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good night, guys. Yeah. So I'm going home. <laughs> but 
No matter how much money you got, you've you got can't to have, compete with Arab you've men. Got to drop a hundred grand in a but club, you've got to have a But you know what? I would also million. say what London men can't do is they can't compete with Arab hospitality. Forget money. Have Their hospitality. Tur- have you been Turkey? Yeah, you guys have got the same hospitality and Greeks. So you guys have got the same one. But it's li- simple things like if you sit with them, it's like, what do you want to eat? What do you want to do? How do I? How they're do feeders. I? They're feeders. Whereas with in English culture, it's You're just like, one, oh, one, she, one can you believe she reach. ordered an extra <laughs> mashed potatoes? Fucking user. Like it's completely different. So the Arab hospitality is something that I don't think most men can ever compete with. Yeah, nice right. yeah it's beautiful. It's it's amazing. That's like me. When I go out, I order the menu. Yeah. And my dad's always said to me, son, do not look at the price of yeah. the food because it's the one thing. But that's a Greek and Turkish thing as well. Because he goes, you're going to eat it anyway. He goes, I don't ever want my son to change what he's eating based on a price. Eat what you're eating, pay for it. And that's, that's how it <laughs> should Hello. be though. Yeah. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, I can't, uh, I've got steak, it's a little bit too, you know. So did your dad um, own the restaurant? Is that how yeah. it works? Oh, amazing. Well, a few other businesses, open the restaurant. Uh, Greek food or Turkish, Turkish food? Open amazing. The restaurant three years ago. Mm-hmm. Make sure you come down. I, really, I love Turkish over the summer. The whole we'll summer I'll be there, inshallah. Booking USA every okay, weekend. I'm yeah? there, I'm there. It's like Dubai I love Turkish food as well. Soup. Stop. Is it? What's your a signature dish? I'll make sure I order it. Um, just come down. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll you'll look after, you. I'll look after me. <laughs> yeah. So your dad opened that. And dad then... opened the restaurant. Been by his side for the last ten years, I'd say. Aww. Just my dad's my best friend as well. I love that. As much as he's my boss. Yeah. He is my boss, and he will always be my boss forever, no matter what. He's my best friend. Is your dad a naughty boy? I'm getting naughty boy vibes from your dad. <laughs> Uncle, this is no. Um, I just feel like it's genetic. No, my dad is very, very. <laughs> uh, what's your dad's name? Ali. Uncle Ali, I am pretty sure me and you need to have a session because I'm getting the vibe that he's a, a charmer. I'm not gonna comment. <laughs> my dad always told me when you don't know what to say, no comment. So I'm just gonna yeah. say no comment. I love that. I'm gonna see him in the summer though, right? Yeah, He'll yeah. He's there. over here now. He flew to Dubai yesterday. Oh, he did? Yeah, oh, he's okay. coming stay- he's staying here. He's not here. It's okay. a, no, no, it's not a shame. Oh. Honestly, it's not a shame. Honestly. Is he naughty? No, no comment. <laughs> we, we... Okay. Sorry, what were you saying about the alcohol and stuff? Yeah, I no, so digress. People, people just, in this country, you can't compete with them. Yeah, you can't compete. The money's a different the thing. The hospitality, but the money, everything, you can't with compete me, with With me, alcohol's never been an issue. And even when I've been in relationships, I try and tell my girl, drink less, drink less. Or drink, if you want to drink, I can't tell you not to drink. Right. But know your limit. Because otherwise, you're going to blame the alcohol in the morning. Yeah. You're going to be rude to me. You're yeah. going to have a talk to me. You're going to, oh, I was drunk. That's can men, can people be fatal when they drink? No, I don't think so. What's going on, guys? This video is being brought to you by Morris Andrews Solicitors. As you're all aware, we've done a season two all about crime. If you watch that all and you're in any situation like that and need help getting out of the situation, reach out to Morris Andrews Solicitors and see if it's something they can help you with. Remember, there's a defense for every offense. Because I always just think it's hard enough when you're faced, but can you imagine people who drink? When you're drunk, it's not you. You can't control it. You can't, No matter how much of a strong head you are, how much... The second you take one sip, there's something in your body now that takes control of you. Really? I think so. Like the devil inside you is ignited. Yeah, it's literally you're feeding him. Stop. You're waking him up. You're waking him up. That's how I look at it, and I just wow. think... I've been in relationships with girls who are good. Well, yeah. I believe they're good. And she's drunk and I've looked at her and I thought, who the fuck are you? Like, really? That's not the same girl who like... Yeah, I think temptation is enough as it is. And then to add alcohol, which completely gets rid of your inhibitions, it's a wild one. It just, it changes the game completely. And I think coming out to Dubai and actually looking... I've been to Dubai loads, but coming here and actually looking at it this time. First time I've ever gone to a club in Dubai. Mm-hmm. Really? Um, yeah, You've never been to a club in Dubai Never been before? to a club. First time I've ever come and gone to a club. What do you think of the club. clubs in Dubai? Honestly, yeah. full of brasses. Yeah, a lot of escorts. Full of escorts. You don't mean normal girls in clubs. Normal and girls don't Any go girl who looks at you in a club and yeah. smiles at you, she's a prostitute. And the guys get so easily gassed. They're like, oh, that girl's looking at me. That was me. I'm yeah. serious. Five years and ago, I come realize. to Dubai. Come to Dubai with the boys. I was at the penthouse, Five Palm. Went upstairs. <laughs> but I didn't know. I come, <laughs> you went to the five. I stayed in the five as well. Yeah, five's lit. Respect uh, no. yourself, please. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> listen. So, went, stayed in the five with the boys. This was yeah. five years ago. Dubai was a little bit different then. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was pre-COVID, so, so it was better. Come out there, stayed in the five, had a wicked holiday, yeah, with the boys. Went upstairs to the penthouse because I was drinking them, but I did, I've never been a big drinker. I'm a right. one, two drinks person. Really? That's it. Never okay. been a big, big drinker. I like to always know what's going on, have my yeah. wits about me. I've always been like that. Okay. And um, went upstairs. As I walked in, there was this girl there, yeah? She waved at me and I thought, Boys, Cut, I'm clearing up. <laughs> just look at me, man. I'm light work. She's p- calling me over now. Walked over to the table. Sat down, <laughs> looking at the boys, like, 
Why are you not got off my go away? I've got this. Like, I'm going now. I'm done. Yeah. She turns to me and goes, No night in Dubai is free. Yeah, you got to pay to play. And I was like, what? In my head, I'm thinking, What do you mean? Like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And she said an amount, a price, and I was like, <laughs> Sorry, you found pain. And you know what? The no weird chance. thing is, you don't even know which culture or anything. It's all of them. It's, before, it would be particular cultures or different. But now it's everything. It can be everything. any any woman, and she can even have a normal job. And she just does it on the so side. What do you think about the eighteen to twenty five year old women who come and live in Dubai? It's a, it's not good for them. Do you think they're actually working, or do you think they're working? They're not working, firstly, and secondly, it's not good for them. They see too much too young. Here's the thing: Dubai is the epitome of pleasure. Yeah, it doesn't get any more than this. Right? Yeah. Whatever you want in terms of like restaurants, in terms of men, in terms of bars, in terms of gyms, everything is is, is extreme. You expose yourself to that far too early, you will find it, uh, you, your future existence feels depressing. So as soon as you get numb to this, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? So I've met a few women yeah. who have said they come to Dubai, they're working out in Dubai. Yeah, what do they say they work? What's the cover-up story these days? Real estate. Real estate is always a good one or an influencer is a great one that so they say. They're not? They're not. It, 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 here's the thing. Real estate doesn't pay you. You have to be fantastic at it. So you have to really, really be good at it. You have to work three, four months without a single penny pay, and then you make it. Now, if she's a real estate and she's literally at home and you don't see her because she's like, I'm struggling to pay rent, then she might be telling the truth. But if she's a real estate agent, but then she's in the Burj Al Arab on a Monday afternoon, she's not a realtor. I agree. Yeah. And it's bad and because it just is what you it see is. so many girls nowadays going, oh, I'm moving to Dubai. Yeah. And you know what they're coming for. There's yeah. only one reason they're here. And But I've they will find it here. Here's the thing. Uh, the promiscuous women find the men here. Of course. Good women don't yeah. find the men. Yeah. But they good women don't look for the men. Good women can come you can still come here. I come here last year yeah. with my ex girlfriend and I had a lovely holiday. Oh. I genuinely come here. We went to like for dinner, we done the property we never went five palm yeah we've done the good dubai can still be oh a, it's great for couples it is it's i beautiful. love it beautiful they've got that new it's pool the sky aura it's beautiful in like the st regis it's the one over the palm yeah stunning you go there and you're like it's like you're in a fucking fairy tale and even if you go sal berger you know what as a couple it's absolutely beautiful but both of you have to be ready to let go of that life yeah. if both of you are ready to get rid of the streets it is the most amazing place for couples and it for is. kids. For kids, it's beautiful. They're, they're, the thing is, you send your kids to schools in Dubai, safe. they're f safe as anything, and their friends are all connections. Their dad's a CEO of this country, dad's a CEO of this, CEO of that. They're building connections so well. So for couples, it's amazing. As long as both of you have decided you're not about that life. You was brought up in the UK, right? Yes, London. Why'd you move? I hate London. You know how I feel about London. I talk about this all the time. Why did you actually, What was? What age? when did you move here? I moved here th two, three years ago. Yeah, so I was about to turn 30. I was like, I'm going to move. And I'm just, this is a 2000. And I was just like, I'm done with this. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to live in London. I feel depressed. I've done everything I can do in London. I hate the hate the weather. I never got used to it. And I felt bored with the people I was around. Did you not feel you'd be judged for the same thing we're talking about? When you no, took that I'm step as well. super confident with the person I am. I think but one conversation. Well, going I to came buy. as a teacher. Oh, yeah, First and foremost, okay. I came as a teacher. And then after teaching, I went into social media. But the thing is, I get judged all day, every day, especially on social media. I get judged <laughs> all day, every day. But because I know and God knows who I am, I don't care. Now, I know and God knows is my answer to everything. It's like even my mum will sometimes be like, oh, someone said you live this, someone says that. And I'm like, yeah, but I know and God knows the truth. Okay. When you know God's watching and you believe in God, you realize his judgment is the only one that really matters. So when people say things and be horrible and stuff like that, I know I'm not doing that. So it is what it is. Do you believe that someone can come from the UK to Dubai with the intention to find a lady to marry and to actually settle down here? Both of them can if two things are in place. Both of them are not too beautiful and too rich. But how? Who judges that? Your bank. No, but who judges the beauty of you? How many your, men your you get? <laughs> <laughs> a banker. Yeah, yeah. I'm good enough to move to Dubai and settle down. <laughs> these are about fun. Here's the thing: we know objectively who's beautiful or not. These are these are things that are not subjective. Yeah, but you say that, but, but then it's based on someone might not find you attractive. Someone mm -hmm. might might not find me attractive. It's They'd true. be blind, but right? No, but it's the truth. They may not. I <laughs> agree. Yeah, they no. would be blind. <laughs> but. <laughs> but here's the thing: there's objective realities in life. We can deny it and pretend it and this, that, and the other. Now, if she's relatively simple and he's relatively simple, lifestyle-wise, money-wise, looks-wise, what happens, and if they haven't been in Dubai too long, they can easily find each other and connect. If they've been in Dubai for and too long, <laughs> yeah, if they've been in Dubai too long, and she's either too beautiful and he's too rich, it's, it's really impossible. But what if that man don't care about his wealth? 
because I've, met, I've he, met people. He might not care about his wealth, but the women here will. So he can not care about his wealth. So I met women a man. Will be I'll tell you a story. I met a man who's worth 500 million pounds, yeah? What does he do? He's very successful. Mm -hmm. He's worth 500 million pounds. Mm -hmm. And he does not give a fuck about money. Doesn't matter what Don't he care thinks. about it. No, no, but he don't. He lives a very basic, simple life. He a does. simple life. He doesn't have a. He don't go around with nice cars. He doesn't go and charter yachts. Is he married? I don't know. Didn't ask that what question. It wasn't really a chat I was having with him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, you got but, a bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. It doesn't matter what you... Here's the thing. There's beautiful women out there that don't but, give so a shit about So he lives in Dubai being, half the time. Yeah. And he just says, yeah, I just, I just like the weather. I don't... But here's... Is he handsome? No. No. So of course he's not going to be a problem. But you're worth 500 million pounds. You're yeah. mad. But here's a, uh, you're uh, getting whoever you want out of here. It's not about what you think of it. It's what people think of it. There might be girls who are super, super beautiful. They don't care about it. But the men here will constantly be on her. She won't have a choice but to get a bit distracted in the lifestyle. Same thing with a man who's got 500 mil. He might not give a shit about that. But there'll be a gold digger every day homing in on him. So it's not about what you think of it. It's what, what you bring. So that I would say it definitely works. If you're new to Dubai and she's new to Dubai and you're looking for that simple, homely vibe. But if one of them's itching and excited by the bright lights, it's impossible. And I think it makes a difference to who you surround yourself with as well. Yeah, I say this to everyone. Matters. Your circle is you. Yeah, it does If matter. you're surrounded by a group of wrong uns, you're going to be mm -hmm. a wrong un. But it's hard to find a good group in Dubai, though. Maybe for guys it's different, but it's, it's hard, hard to find girls. a good group anywhere. Mm. Anyway, even the UK. UK's finished. Have you got a nice group here? Me? Yeah, look at my friends. Come oh. on, how can I complain? I just yeah. don't ever go out with them because I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the... Who do you go out at, at, at with when you want to go out at? I'm the bad influence. I know you are. I am, but <laughs> I say to the, my friends out here, don't come. Okay, yeah. Don't come. You're not gonna I know you're not going to enjoy it. Do not come. Well, so what do you two do? Like when Raheem wants to go home and pray and you want to go out, out what do you go, how do you find a compromise? I got... I, <laughs> no, no, I haven't slept in about three years. Last so who night, do you go out with? Last night, I, I, I don't know a lot of people here. Last <laughs> okay. night I slept because I knew I was doing this podcast. Oh, I got home. I'm I still so got sorry. home at... Yeah, I made it in time for Fajr. I see. Okay. I still go and get my prayers in. Oh, alhamdulillah. God forgives. So yeah. it's fine. I know. Like, I shouldn't encourage that, but it does. God God is very and forgiving. And I don't push the boundary too much. I don't drink. I don't come home smashed and then go Fajr. That's disgusting. Yeah, but okay. God forbid. I try yeah. my best. I do my what's I do. That, what's my the hardest part. thing for a man coming out to Dubai? Picking which woman you want to be with. There's so many. It, do you know what it is? For, for every, yeah. every one man, there's 10 women. Yeah. Like, I went Five Palm the other day. Yeah. It's unreal, right? Like Essex on steroids. Yeah. Yeah. I knew everyone there. Yeah. Like literally nice. I was in the pool and people come over to oh Mike, what's going on? And I was like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> like but it's it's such it's a different world. Like this place here, you can go to a different you can see Dubai for what it is mm. and then you can see it for being something that I don't think pe I don't think Dubai will ever slow down. No. I don't think you can ever come here and you actually. You just gotta settle. pick your pace. It's everyone's moving at two thousand miles per hour. And you just gotta just either jump but in or not. But you know, like Raheem, with your lifestyles more slow paced, do you find what, uh, Dubai wild or not really? So you, you pick your me. pace. You, <laughs> you, yeah, it picks your pace. Yeah, you pick your pace. You're either out and out, or you could just go to a shisha place every night and just chill with your boys. Yeah, it's we do. totally we do that up as well. to you. We go shisha every night before you go out and before he goes home. Yeah. <laughs> I like that because you've got two completely different versions of Dubai. People meet me, yeah, and they meet Raheem, and they look at us both. And they're like. <laughs> How the hell are you lot friends? But he keeps me grounded. That's oh, the thing. He, I love that. He helps me stay like... How did you guys realise you're going to be best friends? We're not best friends. I you hate, are. I that's him. cute. You can admit it. You two, how did no, you, what was the moment? Do you know what it is? I think we both... Was it in the podcast? Did your eyes meet across the microphone? Oh, <laughs> no, no. Genuinely, I what think happened? with Raheem, I think we've both built up a, such a good relationship regarding religion. Oh, I think God, it's, God introduced you. Yeah, I think it's more... We know... Uh, he he knows he's good for me. Yeah. I know that I've got to like help him in what I'm doing. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I don't have friendships like that in my life, and nice I feel really. Oh. <laughs> you know I don't have that. I have my my closeness to religion comes from my family, my cousins, and stuff like that. But we're friends. This is a problem I've had because I don't wear hijab. Um, religious women tend not to assume I'm gonna. They're gonna have a connection with me, and the more kind of wilder women and stuff think we're going to be best friends so we become really good friends but then when we go out they're like oh you, she doesn't drink she only eats halal she has to go there she has to be home by 11 and then like oh okay but so i don't find my circle that easily i don't know it's, it's not it's not a usual thing for me but i think because he's a river yeah like guidance, yeah it's almost been like a vision for me 
Oh, I love that. You've adopted him. <laughs> what has Raheem taught you? Go out, get lit. I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. No. With Raheem, honestly, he... <laughs> no, no, no. What has Raheem taught you that's been super valuable? I think it's... As much as I give credit to Raheem for what he's done, I think it's... Everyone's on their own journey. Yeah, of course. I was going to find Islam regardless. Yeah, God found Whether you. Whether Raheem showed me or you showed me or mm. anyone, I was meant to find it. And I think it's helped me because even down to women, I don't... I try to go for a Muslim woman now because... I don't drink, so when I'm out with my yeah, girl, as long she as looks. At, she looks at you funny if you've yeah, gone out with a girl and, she, and you're like, I don't drink. She's like, Come on, babe, just have one. You're like, No, I'm not drinking. See, men don't have mind one. it when you say you don't drink, but I think girls would mind it when a man says, Yeah. Guys, thank you for watching. If you want to learn how to pick the right woman or man, don't contact. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> don't call contact me, guys. Sadia. I'm really busy at the moment. Don't call me, please. I'm <laughs> what do you fully mean? booked. I'm calling you every day I know, now. I'm so fully booked. Sadia, she said this. What do I do? What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call me anytime. Sadia Psychology is where to find me. Message her. All her stuff will be in the bio anyway. Yes. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you. Sadia, pleasure meeting it's you, been darling. Amazing. Thank you.